So I'm like noticing that there are so many black women who are like reading the secret and going to pleasure parties, getting like concoctions and creating affirmations that are meant to attract a good black man to them. And honestly, I believe that that's a whole bunch of BS. Honestly, it's a whole bunch of BS. Because you're saying all this stuff. You're saying I am attracting a financially able uh, black man. Are you saying that I'm doing all these things? But what are you really committed to? Like, what are you really committed to? Like, you want a man who is focused on you, who is faithful, who loves you. But at the, at the same time, you are not focused on yourself. You're talking to five different guys right now. You have one man that you're talking to, one man that you're effing, one man that you use to take you out to dinner, um, and one man who's like a phone buddy who you just speak to at all hours of the night just because you can't spend time by yourself. Or you want a man who, who provides for you, who plays his role as a man in your relationship, who um, loves you and who wants to provide for you. But you, when was the last time you studied the roles of womanhood? When was the last time you went in the kitchen and cooked up a meal? When was the last time you learned what it means to be submissive? When was the last time you learned what it means to communicate with a man? What kind of communication style a man has? What kind of communication style a woman has? What your man needs in terms of what his love language is? What men need? Like, men need respect. Like, when was the last time you understood that and learned that? Or you want someone who's authentic and you want someone who loves you to pieces and you want someone who is going to be that power couple where you just see love and power and all the success. But when was the last time you decided to be successful on your own? When was the last time you went out and tried to increase your power, try to increase your skills? When was the last time you loved the parts of you that you are expecting and demanding everybody else or a man to love and then when you don't receive this man you walk around saying black men ain't ish black men ain't ish when no you're just committed to attracting black men that ain't ish because you're committed to a script you're committed to living out a script that's going to leave you lonely independent um and just dealing with men who are living out that same script who are in and out of your life so really think about it what are you committed to all right. Just to license it. And the radio special report. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you guys hit that notification bell that will pop up after the after you hit the subscribe button. Notice, I notice many of you don't do that. You don't hit the subscribe button. You just you just wait for you think I'm gonna keep sending you these episodes in the morning. You guys don't know that's gonna stop soon. But uh, yeah, for those of you who I send the episodes to in the morning, that's gonna stop soon. So you're gonna be on your own. And if you don't watch the show, you know it is what it is. Uh, make sure that you guys follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on SoundCloud so that you always know when we have new content. Make sure you guys go watch all of our other YouTube content, the Random Radio Video Show, the Random Radio Weekend News, the Random Reaction Episodes, and uh, the random the more episodes of the Random Radio Special Reports. All right. All right, today's episode, is com today we have a video that I'm going to react to. This is from... Shahrazad Ali. You guys may know her. She's been in a couple of Af pro black films. She has written many books. Uh, one of her most famous books is The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. Very controversial, very controversial book, bringing forth community forums and pickets and heated arguments amongst blacks in many parts of the United States. It was published in 1989. Uh, she's also created, have other books. Uh, she's been a guest commentator, and she's very pro-black. She's also been on the, on the Trisha Goddard show once with white supremacist Craig Cobb, agreeing with Cobb that black and white races should be separated. I'm Miss Ali, 
And I believe in separation of the people. Separation is divine. And I think that everyone should have a right to live with their own kind. I don't want to live next to white people. And I don't think that that means I'm a racist either. I think that every people should be able to live with their own kind and have peace among themselves. This is a real situation about the separation of races. And if we can start taking steps toward it, like they're doing in North Dakota, I think that we could do it in peace without the government having to get in it. The cob. Welcome, Miss Ali. Do you agree well, with Craig's you. vision for, for Leaf? Yeah, yes, I agree. I, uh, I don't think that a person is necessarily a racist just because they want to live with their own kind. Mm. He deserves to li live with his own kind, and we should be able to live with our own kind. And uh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. So this is the kind of African-American woman we have running around here. She's obviously a racist, but she has a message for the black man on how to understand the black woman. So this isn't about her racial ideals. This is more so about her uh, message to the black race. So we're going to listen to some of the things she has to say, and I'm going to chime in when I see necessary. So let's check out a little excerpt of a, actually I think this was a 59 minute uh, presentation, but we're only going to check out eight minutes of it. This is The Black Man's Guide to Understand the Black Woman by Sharazad Ali. Let's go. Let's see what she's talking about. My position is that the black woman's disrespect and rebellion against the leadership and the authority of the black man is a direct cause of the breakdown in our black family structure. Wow. Well, off top, let me tell you, Sharazad Ali, all that other stuff I said about you, I take it all back. I mean, even though you are probably a racist I, I i'm looking at that statement alone and thinking what a genius this woman is god damn it Gump. you're a goddamn genius she's absolutely right the disrespect that black women have for black men has led to a breakdown in the black community it's that dis that sheer disrespect that has led to the problems within our our, our black dynamic i'm sure the same problem is happening in the white race as well but we're talking about black folks right now this is just about us Let's listen to more of what Sharazad Ali has to say. Now, of course, there are many black people who consider those fighting words because as black women, we have never been subject to the kind of examination uh, that our men have been subject to since we have been here. We have been somewhat protected and shielded from any kind of critiquing about our personal behavior, whereas our men have always been up for examination. Uh, the book is not an attack on black women. I have never said that all black women do everything that I list in my book. Uh, none of us have lived long enough to do everything that I list in the book. But uh, most of us do some of the things that I have listed in my book. And I do say that it is not because of generalizations that we are all victimized by some of the negative patterns of behavior in the book. But the book just represents our collective contribution. This is some of everything that we have done or that we do daily that contributes to the breakup of our relationship, the destruction of our man, and the failure of our children to be able to function. They did not tell us that all of that uh, being my own person and I'm independent would lead to separation, loneliness, celibacy, and lesbianism. They didn't tell us that if you give up the man, you're going to take one of these things and it's worse and it will destroy your nation. Wow. I wonder how many of you women actually agree with her on that. There are so many black women who run around saying, I'm strong, I'm this, I take care of my kids, I'm this, I'm that, I got all my stuff together, and she's right. There's lesbianism, there's all this dysfunction amongst the African American society. I mean, and, 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 and I believe that it is because of this. The idea that the, one, the black woman is queen, the black man is not anything more but just a sperm donor. The idea that the black woman is strong, but the black man is weak without a black woman has made this idea that the black man uh, is nothing without the black woman and the black woman is everything without him. So much so that black women have even started to look at other black women as their kings and their guidance. Ain't that a trip? You go and you get yourself a woman who acts like a boy. So she's got an identity issue. And then you put her on a pedestal as your king. Uh-huh. They didn't give us that information. They made us think that it was some kind of glorified position to brag about the fact that I got my own job, my own credit card, my own car, so I don't need no man. 
I don't even know how we got that mixed up. Ain't none of that got nothing to do with having being with no man. My nigga. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, all right, all right, all right. She makes a very good point. What does having a, your own job, your own car, your own house have to do with, with, with having a man? As a matter of fact, you know, as a man who's in his 30s, I think that any woman that's in her 30s, you should already have those things anyway. You should be a responsible adult. So having those things has nothing to do with not having a man. It's because you're a responsible adult. <laughs> what does that have to do with, being, with having a man? <laughs> Yeah, we, we have some serious relationship problems that uh, nobody has been able to address us on because everybody wants to pretend that this is not going on. You know, over 60% of our women are single, widowed, separated, or divorced. They don't have a man. I just came out of Florida and they got a housing complex that the Urban League built, which is a black organization that is for women and children only. They, don't, they say they don't allow any men in there. Isn't that interesting? And when you think about the breakdown of the black man in, in his family, isn't that interesting how so many black groups like the NAACP, the Urban League, uh, Chicago, not, not Chicago, uh, African American Family Commission, they'll do anything that they can to help a woman, single mother, get a home, but they won't do anything to help a man or a father be a better father. They'll do anything that they can to help that single mother thrive without that man, but they won't do anything to put that man back into that child's life. And these are black people doing this. This isn't the white man doing this to you. These are black organizations saying that we don't need the black man in the home. What are, what are these black organizations trying to manufacture? What are they saying to the black community? What do the black organizations really think about the black man? Think about it. I didn't have time to deal with it, but I talked about them real bad. That's the silliest program I've ever heard of. You know the women that had men if they got a bunch of children. They need fathers. They need protection. We hear about the drug problem that we have in our projects across the country. It's one of the major places that we have a drug problem. You know, we talk about the great strength that we have as black women. Well, the uh, welfare department don't rent government apartments to single black men. Those apartments belong to black women who are allowing this to go on in their home. We have not looked at what part of the responsibility do we share. Yes, black men sell a lot of drugs, and a lot of us black women get the money from them drugs and buy some of these fancy clothes we wear, drive around in some of these fancy cars. He is not doing these things alone and without support from us, whether they are good or bad. See, we have a I, I like what she said there. That's very true. Uh, in most of these urban areas, most of these ghettos and these projects, these are mostly single mothers. The illegitimacy rate in the black community is at, is at 81% in 2019. So, I mean, how can we, any of us say, oh, the man is the problem when these ghettos are ran by women who are raising these boys to be the thugs that they actually want to date? Because that is what they're raising their sons to be, the men that they couldn't have or the men that they want. They want a gangster and a gentleman. They want him to be a gangster and a gentleman, but he's a gangster in the streets and a gentleman only to the mother. He's not a gentleman to his baby mama. The same way the woman, the mother of this child didn't have a gentleman when she was raising, when she was at mating. She didn't, she didn't meet a gangster and a gentleman. She met a gangster who she thought was a gentleman. Now, how interesting is this is that Ms. Ali is pointing out that none of these black men are in these communities. They're all women running these communities. So they are the ones who are ruining these communities and messing up these men. And then Barack Obama has the audacity to say things like this. And former President Obama has you talking. He says men are to blame for the world's problems. Just if fault. every nation were run by women, quote, there would be significant improvement in just about everything. And although women aren't perfect, they're indisputably better than men, end quote. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> oh, he's not a beta, huh? He's not a beta who would say something so illogical as Miss Ali has just pointed out that it is these black women who are ruining these neighborhoods and these black men? Stop it. See, we have a lot of power. We are very strong women. I'm saying that we're using our strength in the wrong direction. We're using it to tear our man down, tear our nation down instead of building it up.
having an education and a job is not, does not necessarily mean you have a successful life. I keep telling black women that to uh, raise a child, they say, well, I uh, provided with food, clothing, and shelter. That's not raising a child, that's maintaining one. To raise a child, you need a parental coalition of a man and a woman. We have sons who are, by not having a father in the home, they don't know how to respect women. They take on the uh, black feminine, female emotionalism, emotionalism. They become bitchy, they're doubtful, they're indecisive, they can't make a decision. They don't know what to do about being a man because we can't teach them that. We don't have that knowledge. I love it. I love what she just said here. And this is very true. This is very, very true. These men today are not men. Most of these men sitting in jails, Tupac, if you would, Niggas need to stop giving these bitches all the attention. That's why niggas is dying now. When these hoes get horny, niggas die. Hoes get horny, niggas die. Watch. Thank you. They, most of these men are sitting in jail because of a woman. Most of these men are sitting in jail because they saw their, their mothers, their grandmas, their sisters do traits that were outrageous and get away with it. And then they've done the same things. And you think that you're raising these men to be good men. Look at all the betas we have running around here now. Look at all the women who can't find men because they're all turning into little bitch boys, little beta cucks. And this is what we want, though. This is what society is telling us we should make more of. These kind of men. Get rid of men like Lorenzo Tomas. Make more of these bitch boys. Okay. How's that working out for you, ladies? Not too good, huh? We have daughters who grew up in a home where they don't see any affection, where there's no man there. They go out into the world and try to mate. They don't have no idea how to be no woman to no man, how to ma function in a house with a man, because they haven't seen it. Most of our children, just like us, get all the information we have about how you be with a mate off television. It's the only medium that shows us anybody being together. Those rules have not worked for us. The white woman's liberation movement, we don't have anything to do with that. We have not been under the control of the black man for over 500 years, so what do we have to get liberated from them from? I like it. I like what she said there. I do like it. I don't agree with her about the white woman's liberation movement not being for all women. I mean, I think that it was for lesbians and women who didn't want to be mothers. And that may have been mostly white women at the time. But I think that she's absolutely correct. She's absolutely correct. Um, she's 100% right. Miss Ali should be president. <laughs> They haven't been our boss. That's the white woman and her man. They're going through that, and that's their business. We don't have any business being in that. They only introduced it to break down the civil rights movement. Civil rights movement started with the black man, the black woman, and the black child standing together, trying to plead for a freedom, justice, and equality, and more benefits in the country that they had had built. Oh. Actually, the civil rights movement started with communism infiltrating the black community and making blacks believe that they are not Americans. Because prior to the communist movement and the civil rights movement, black families were more intact than ever before. After the civil rights movement and in 1965, you saw a steep decline in the black family dynamic. A family dynamic that, that once saw two, two parent households at 80% in black families in, or as, early as, as late as 1945. Before the civil rights movement started, after the civil rights movement started in 1965, the number declined all the way down to 65% and it has been going less and less since. So I hear what she's saying, but I don't think the civil rights movement helped us. I think that also hurt us more as, as a black dynamic. Because from the civil rights movement, you get affirmative action, you get welfare, you get all these things that help black women keep the black men out of the homes so that they can, make, so that they can replace him with the government. And that is who became the father in those homes. So while I agree with her on most things, I don't agree with her on the civil rights movement, that hurt blacks. That did not help us. They threw the white woman in there with the women's liberation movement and made it a woman against man thing. That created a big separation between black men and black women because then everybody started going for self. Then they bring the welfare system in and tell us in order to feed and clothe and house our children, we have to give up our man. You have to put the man out of the house. When the white farm wife goes to the government for subsidy for the farm, they don't tell her to get rid of the farm and they keep that family together. But in the black community, they make it a requirement because they want to keep endorsing into the black community that the black man is no good and that he is not deserving of respect, he is not deserving of us letting him give us any protection or instruction and that we are better than them. Well, I, I you know, here's what's something that's interesting about this. I think that's true. I think that... 
one thing that the government does understand is that a strong male figure in the household will lead to strong youth and better children and a, and a better household for all wife and children by reducing the man you can reduce the ability of those children to be functioning you can reduce that wife's capacity to be st to be stable now i i do agree with her on that. i don't think that it was done just to the black man though because we see the white family is declining at a very rapid rate and i don't think that it's just because they were doing this to the black man i do think that the black people saw the opportunities by doing this to the black man and they capitalized on it i.e your jesse jacksons and al sharptons who never once stopped this from happening but promoted the idea of single motherhood onto black people i'm something to think about the major responsibility that the black woman has had on the earth for the over uh the trillions of years that we have been here has been one of nutrition and birthing children those two things have a great deal to do with the survival of any people, the reproduction of the nation, and feeding them the proper food so that they can live. Those are very important jobs. Those are very powerful positions, because it puts us in a position to decide who's going to live or die, and how slow they're going to die by what we feed them. We have a very powerful position. That's, that's not a, a small role that we play. We have just been taught to misrepresent and misuse that power. The, the people who we have been counting on to give us the truth about how to get along uh, have failed. The white people don't know how to get along. They don't have that information themselves. They don't get along with nobody on earth. So they don't have no information to impart to us about how we're supposed to get along. Well, I will tell her this, you know, I, as you all know, I am not a racist. I don't believe in any of this white black stuff, but I have to agree with her here. The white people are not the end all be all when it comes to instruction on how to get along with others. I mean, the white man has been in conflict with various different ethnicities for a long time, but all ethnicities have been in conflict with each other. So I don't really think that, that to help the black race, that the white man should have any, any say so on what to do with the black race. I think the blacks should figure it out themselves. But as I point to Miss Ali, the groups that we've put in place to help us, they're not doing that. They're hurting us. So who do we run to? Like escape. Yeah, who do we run to? They change their relationship rules at will. We have, you know, tons of black children around this country that I hear from who will have grown up traumatized by the fact that they were referred to as the outside child. You know, when we were having children like that, they called it illegitimate children until the white woman started having them and now it's single parenting. <laughs> See, they changed the rules according to what they're doing. That's very interesting. That's very interesting that she says that because I don't think that that's a white thing. I think that's a democratic thing. I think the Democrats needed female votes as well as needing the black votes. So when stop, to stop calling things illegitimate, to stop, stop calling them illegitimate children, they called them single motherhood. And I believe the Democrats did that. If you look at the number of single mothers that vote or single women who have children that vote Democrat, it's almost 90% of them vote Democrat. While there's a, a slow level of 10% who vote Republican or other. And the reason why that is because the Democrats have catered to these women by telling them you're strong. And I am a strong woman. We're going to give you benefits for being a single mother. They've done that. I don't think this is the white man. I think this is a more of a political thing more than anything else. So I've called on our people to change them depending on what we want to do. What our needs are. There's another need that has not been addressed in our community, no, because nobody will deal with it, and that's one that God did not create three sexes. We only have men and women. Now, I have not said that we should reject the sisters who try and act like men and the men who try and act like women. I'm not saying to reject them from among us, but they need to be taught. We don't have to accept that as some kind of normalcy because that's not normal. Oh, my. Obviously, this is from 1980s because today, Miss Ali would be totally shunned from the LGBTQ, HIV, AIDS community. They would not have this. But she's right. She is right. We don't have to accept that. Nobody has to accept someone else's sexual lifestyle. You don't have to accept it. And if heterosexual blacks or whites don't want to have to accept gay, they don't have to. 
But more importantly for the black community, with them being so so much of devout Christians and being so you know stuck on that book, I would think that because of the word, you wouldn't even want to accept homosexuality because of the Bible or if your nation of Islam because of the Quran. But it's interesting how the African American community has fully embraced homosexuality and transgenderism as if it is a part of who we are or a normal phase of our life. Not saying that homosexuality is not something that has always existed. I'm just saying, I don't know if that's something that blacks always did until they became Americanized and then they learned about homosexuality. There may have been some gay act going on in, in Africa. There may have been gay in other different indigenous areas. I don't think that it was this widespread and as this big of a trend until the Western world put it on TV. And we all know that blacks are highly susceptible to what they see on television and what the white man tells them to do. So they'll do anything the white man says to get attention. It's pretty unfortunate. But because now the white people are practicing that, you know, when we were doing it, we were punks and faggots. Now that they're doing it, now it's an alternative lifestyle. <laughs> Didn't I just say that? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm trying to demonstrate how they have set rules that they have forced us to follow that they don't even follow themselves. They changed the rules to suit them when they get ready. We can change them to suit us when we get ready, especially if we have what we have now, which is a failing system. It hasn't worked for us. We don't have to be ashamed that it hasn't worked for us. Well, we're going to end this there. there. There's actually more of this. There's about 59 minutes of this full on recording where she speaks to the black man about the black woman. Um, I didn't want to do it all because it would have been way too long of an episode. We've already 22 some minutes in, so I didn't want to do that. But you guys, the link is in the in the description box below. You guys feel free to go check out the full 59 minute speech. I thought this was very interesting and very impactful and powerful of the things that she was saying because a lot of the things that she's saying are true. Uh, a lot of the things that blacks are doing, they are not doing them because they think it's black. They're doing it because they're trying to fit in with, the, they're trying to conform to American values. Uh, blacks are constantly talking about they have black pride and black power and they're their own independent people. Yet I see them being more American every day, doing more Americanized things every day. And I definitely hear black women talking about their black kings, but not appreciating them at all. Treating them like trash, thinking that they're only worth having around for making babies. And then if that man doesn't have what they need or is not financially secure, that black woman will ditch him in a heartbeat and say things like these black these niggas just they they just don't be doing enough they, they don't be doing enough but of course most black women today have a nasty diva attitude which is probably probably really the real reason why you can't find you a good man and single motherhood is making an abundance of betas out there so this will probably continue on for decades and decades so shout out to Sherazad Ali. I like the information that she's saying, even though some of it is a little bit racist, but that's okay. I understand where she's coming from. And we might we might do a part two to this. Maybe I'll pick up where we left off and revisit some more of what she's saying. But you guys check it out. Let me know what you think. Do you think that Sherazad Ali is lying? Do you think that she's a fool? Do you think that she's full of shit? Do you think she's making things up? Do you think that she's right on point? Leave your messages in the comments section. Tell me what you think. And uh, we will, you know, I don't know. I think Shirazad Ali is onto something. She's pretty on point. I don't think that it's just black men. I think it's all races actually are suffering from this. Uh, but I, I do understand where she's coming from. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Yeah, you are listening to